All right, good morning or good afternoon, everyone, wherever you may be. Um, thank you for joining us for this edition of our monthly educational webinars, where we invite and speak with um, different experts from a variety of industries, um, all for the purpose of educating our listeners on the benefits of uh, self-directed retirement plans and the different investments one may take advantage of through this vehicle. Um, my name is Manzer Gaucher with the Antrust Group. I'm so excited about today's uh, presentation titled Digital Ad Asset Investments Navigating Today's Blockchain Market, featuring uh, both uh, Judd Kitzmiller and Corey Rodriguez of NFN8 Group. Uh, Corey and I have had several conversations in the past. I see uh, his, um, Corey's passion about this very topic. Him and, uh, and Judd are both eager to share their information and expertise with all of us today. But uh, before I bring on uh, Corey and Judd, please allow me just a few minutes to um, talk about the interest group, our role, et cetera. Next slide, please. So before we get started, we have a disclaimer that we have to read out loud. Uh, the Entrust Group, Entrust does not provide investment advice nor endorse any products. Uh, all of the information and materials are for educational purposes only. All parties are encouraged to consult with their attorneys, accountants, and financial advisors before entering into any type of investment. Next, please. So here's our agenda for today, where uh, again, introduction about the interest, who we are, and then NFN8 uh, group. Uh, they'll talk about what are digital assets, investing in digital assets, the importance of risk management, and then we'll leave up some time for Q&A, which I'm sure a lot of you will have some questions. Please don't hesitate to, to go ahead and enter those in the chat box, and we will get to them, time permitting, after our uh, presentation with Corey and Judd. So a little bit about myself again, um, I'm the regional business development manager for the Entrust Group uh, for the past 20 years or so. I've enjoyed working with investors and professionals alike, educating them on the benefits of self-directed retirement plans. Um, next, please. But a little bit about our the interest group for those of you uh, listeners that are not familiar with us. Uh, for the over about forty years or so, we have empowered over forty five thousand investors to take charge of their retirement plans. So we have um, over four billion dollars in investor assets, and with our one point of contact, uh, we provide our clients with a superior customer service and faster transaction times. So we're one of the nation's oldest and largest self-directed IRA custodians. Uh, we provide our clients with the account administration and record keeping of uh, their uh, IRA accounts, as well as online portal. We have 24 seven account access. We pride ourselves with our client education resources available through our online library of articles, white papers, webinars, in-service or in-person events. We hold national and local events. If you're interested in learning more about this, please contact us. We'll have our contact page at the end of our presentations there. We also sponsor an IRA Academy, which we're very proud of, where we actually um, teach this course to uh, that trains others uh, in, in our industry to pass the, uh, the CISP course, which is the Certified IRA Services Professional designation, which many of our employees at Entrust Group uh, have and we're proud of. So what is a self-directed IRA? I get this question. I've been, I've been doing this over 20 years and, 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 and literally we get this question almost every day. Um, a self-directed IRA is not a type of IRA. It's just a term used in the industry for an IRA that allows you increased control, greater diversification over your investment and retirement savings. That's all it is. You're in charge of making all of your investment decisions, allows you greater opportunity for asset diversification, for instance. So unlike IRAs held at your traditional brokerage firms or banks, um, an SDIRA 
is not limited to your traditional stocks, bonds, mutual funds. With a self-directed IRA, you can invest in everything from private equities, real estate, precious metals, startups, um, digital assets such as cryptocurrencies, NFTs, and, and many, many more. So speaking of digital investments, time to hand over the mic to our experts and our presenters today, uh, Corey and Judd. Uh, gentlemen, the mic is yours. Yes, uh, thank you, everybody. Oh, sorry, you want to go first, Corey? Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, hi, my name is Corey Rodriguez. I'm the COO of NFNA Group and partner. And Judd, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Yeah, uh, I'm Judd Kitzmiller. I'm also with NFNA Group. Um, you know, I've been in the uh, self-directed IRA field for about a decade in the alternative investment and uh, cryptocurrency arena for just about as long. I'm so happy to walk everyone through this presentation. Uh, today, we're just going to go through just more general education on like what are digital assets? Uh, what is the blockchain? And by the end of this lesson, you should have a better understanding of how digital assets are created, you know, what makes them valuable, you know, how to evaluate the volatility of today's market and capitalize on current trends. Uh, you should also be able to assess all the ways that you, or most of the ways uh, that you can passively invest in each sector and also do so through your IRA uh, while maintaining your exempt status. Um, so going ahead and diving into it, uh, first slide here we have are what are digital assets, understanding digital assets. Um, so there, there's in the fun, uh, general fun, uh, fundamental technology behind them. So digital assets in simple terms are digitized representations of value uh, that exist in electronic form. So it's, it's digital money. Uh, this can be anything from cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum. Uh, to digital tokens representing ownership in a real world asset, such as real estate or artwork. And what really sets digital assets apart is the reliance on cryptographic techniques and blockchain technology that ensures security, transparency, uh, and immutability of transactions. Uh, now there's different types of digital assets, and here's four of them. Uh, the first one is cryptocurrencies. So these are digital or virtual currencies that use cryptography for security and operate on decentralized networks. Uh, you've probably heard of different cryptocurrencies out there like Bitcoin, Ethereum, you know, there's a bunch of other ones. But in layman terms, cryptocurrencies are money that only exist uh, digitally. There's also tokens and smart contracts. Um, Tokens represent various assets, both digital and physical, uh, and they can be used to create programmable agreements called smart contracts on blockchain platforms. Um, and don't worry about that. We're going to explain exactly what blockchain is shortly. I know we've, I've mentioned that term a number of times now. Uh, there's also NFTs known as non-fungible tokens. NFTs have gotten a lot of hype lately. You've probably heard about them in the news uh, NFTs are unique digital assets that represent ownership of a specific item or piece of content, like such as digital art, collectibles, virtual real estate, you know, like you own the digital version of the Mona Lisa painting, for example. There's also security tokens. Uh, these digital assets represent ownership and real world assets like real estate stocks or commodities, and they even offer rights and dividends uh, to their holders. And then blockchain and digital asset creation. So now uh, diving into blockchain and digital assets and how they're created at the heart of digital assets lies blockchain technology. And in short, blockchain is a distributed and decentralized public ledger uh, that records transactions in a secure and transparent manner. Uh, when a new digital asset is created, it's typically through a process called tokenization. And that's where real world assets or concepts are represented by unique tokens on a blockchain. So that ensures traceability, security, tamper resistance. And as we move forward in this webinar in the next couple of slides, uh, we'll delve deeper into the factors that determine 
the value of those digital assets, including scarcity, utility, uh, and the overall network effect. All right, so next we have determining the value of digital assets. Um, so what, what makes them worth anything, right? Uh, I, I can't hold it in my hand. It's digital, you know, it doesn't make sense. So understanding a couple of these factors or these three can help provide some insights into why certain assets gain traction uh, and appreciation. Uh, so the first is scarcity and supply. So scarcity plays a significant role in determining the value of digital assets like Bitcoin. Uh, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin have a predetermined supply limit, and that makes them deflationary in nature. Like once all the supply of Bitcoin is in circulation, that's it. Uh, you can't print any more of it once it's all out in circulation uh, for the public to use. And that, that's all there will ever be. So as the supply becomes more scarce, it can lead to increased demand and potentially higher prices. Uh, the scarcity factor contributes to the perception of value over time. And we've seen this with the price of Bitcoin. You know, as time has moved on and the supply of Bitcoin has gone down, simultaneously more and more people are buying it or, or creating it through mining, uh, which we'll talk about. And we've seen the price go from a few hundred dollars back in 2012 uh, to over $30,000 today uh, for one Bitcoin. Uh, as far as utility and use cases, utility is, is another crucial aspect of digital asset value. Assets that have real world applications and solve specific problems tend to have just some more intrinsic value. Uh, so for example, tokens that enable access to decentralized applications uh, or services can gain value based on the utility within those ecosystems. And then we have network effect and adoption. Uh, the network effect is the phenomenon where the value of a product or service increases as more people use it, right? So this concept applies to digital assets as well. The more users and participants a blockchain or platform has, the more valuable its associated assets become. Uh, adoption drives demand, leading to increased value. Uh, there were 12 million people who owned Bitcoin in 2015 when the price was around $300 for one Bitcoin. Uh, today, there's about 200 million people globally uh, who own Bitcoin, where the price today hovers around $30,000. Uh, so scarcity, utility, and network effect are the biggest, like, big top three factors that determine uh, the value of a digital asset. Uh, now, next, when it comes to digital assets, there's, of course, a ton of market volatility that comes with it. So let's focus on that. There, there's a lot of volatility in the digital asset market. Uh, volatility refers to the rapid or unpredictable price fluctuations in the market. And understanding that is essential when it comes to making a, a decision on what you're going to invest in if you decide to. Uh, so the nature of market volatility, market volatility is a common phenomenon, again, in the world of digital assets. Uh, prices can experience significant swings within short periods. Uh, and that can present both opportunities uh, and risks. And while it can lead to substantial gains, right, it also carries a potential for substantial losses. Uh, various factors contribute to digital asset volatility. Uh, that can include, you know, regular regulatory developments, technological advancements, market sentiment, uh, macroeconomic trends, and even media coverage. You know, Elon Musk can post a tweet and change the market for a few days. We've seen that happen. So it's important to stay informed about those factors uh, to anticipate potential movements in the market. And then there's also historical trends. And looking at that can help provide insights into the volatility of digital asset markets. You know, we've seen periods of rapid growth followed by corrections. Uh, Bitcoin went from a few thousand to 20,000 in 2017, dropped back down to 7,500, skyrocketed to 70,000 in 2021, corrected down to around 30,000 where it is today. So understanding these patterns can help us navigate, you know, future market conditions a little bit more effectively. Uh, now that we have a grasp of volatility and its impact, let's talk about how we can capitalize uh, on current trends. 
So identifying market trends involves us closely monitoring market developments, news shifts, and investor sentiment. So for instance, the rise of decentralized finance, it's also known as DeFi, or the adoption of blockchain and supply management are trends that can present unique investment opportunities. Uh, there's also bull and bear markets. You know, uh, crypto markets can be broadly categorized into bull and bear markets or freight phases. Uh, bull markets are characterized by a sustained upward trend, while bear markets involve a prolonged downward trend. Uh, so strategies differ between these phases from riskier positions in bull markets to defensive strategies in bear markets. And then there's also strategies for riding trends. So something's catching on fire like Dogecoin a couple of years ago. You want to buy it, take the risk, see where it goes. Um, you know, so that requires a combination of thorough research and just strategic execution. Um, but uh, and then, the, you know, key takeaways here are identifying trends involves monitoring market shifts and investor sentiment. Bull and bear markets require different investment strategies and then trend following and contrarian approaches can be effective strategies uh, as well. Now for the fun stuff, uh, we'll discuss how you can passively invest in various sectors within the realm of digital assets. Uh, so from cryptocurrencies to tokenized assets, uh, different options offer exposure to diverse segments of the market. So one of the most straightforward ways to passively invest in digital assets is just through buying and holding cryptocurrency. Uh, so this can be done by purchasing a diversified portfolio of well-established cryptocurrencies. Um, over time, the value of these holdings can appreciate based on market trends. So I, like if you had bought Bitcoin back in 2015 and held it, you would have seen over a 5,000% return if you sold it today. Um, tokenized assets in real estate. So there's tokenized assets represent ownership and real world assets like real estate or commodities. So by investing in tokenized real estate, for example, you gain the exposure to the real estate market without the need for direct ownership. Uh, so this form of investment offers a lot of liquidity, fractional ownership, uh, this is a sector that's gaining a ton of momentum. It's expected to skyrocket in the coming years. Like imagine being able to close on a property in a few days, do it without a title company. You know, imagine executing an investment in a piece of real estate in a few minutes and being able to liquidate in a few minutes. So that's what tokenized real estate uh, brings to the table. There's also ETFs. Uh, this is newer. So ETFs are gaining momentum, a ton of momentum in the world of digital assets. Uh, the largest financial institutions in the world, such as BlackRock, Grayscale, have recently filed for Bitcoin spot ETFs with the Securities and Exchange Commission. This has been followed by Fidelity, uh, Wells Fargo, Deutsche Bank. These are the largest institutions in the world. They, they hold tens of trillions of dollars in assets. Now, investors are anticipating that these new options to gain uh, traction uh, and accomplish steady higher returns on investment with lower concern for volatility. Uh, and again, not to mention when a whale like BlackRock, who holds $17 trillion in assets, publicly advertises a Bitcoin spot ETF, that could also cause some mass increase in adoption, uh, which could affect the appreciation uh, and uh, the total value. Now, there's also mining, uh, and this is my favorite. So Bitcoin mining, you know, you can mine all sorts of digital assets, but Bitcoin is the original institutional standard. Uh, so Bitcoin mining involves using specialized hardware, we call them supercomputers, to validate transactions and secure the Bitcoin network. Uh, so miners are rewarded with newly minted Bitcoin and transaction fees, uh, and while it requires an upfront investment in the equipment, paying for the electricity, it can also provide a steady stream of income over time. Uh, and what makes Bitcoin mining so exciting and why, why it's worth it is the ability to acquire Bitcoin for way below the spot price of Bitcoin. Uh, you can buy a Bitcoin on an exchange for $26,000 today if you bought a whole Bitcoin. Or if you're mining, you could potentially create 
one Bitcoin for $15,000 in total cost. Uh, so think of Bitcoin mining as printing money, only you're using supercomputers to solve equations rather than using a printer to push out paper. Um, however, there's a lot of variables, um, you know, that go into running a profitable mining operation. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about mining as uh, as we go on. And next slide, we want to talk about blockchain. Uh, so what is blockchain technology? Um, so let's delve into the essence of blockchain by using a tangible analogy, uh, Legos. Uh, we've all probably played as Legos as kids. Much like Legos, uh, blockchain is compo composed of building blocks that, when interconnected, form a robust structure with unparalleled integrity. So the Lego analogy, imagine each block as a digital record containing transactions or data. Just as Legos are interlocked to construct a structure, these digital blocks are linked together to form a chronological chain, hence the term blockchain. Uh, each Lego block in the chain represents a set of transactions. It has a timestamp, a reference to the previous block. And then the Lego's chain strength lies in its immutability. So once a Lego block is placed, altering it or any preceding blocks requires disassembling and reassembling the entire structure. And that's an arduous feat akin to changing blockchain data. So this permanence ensures data integrity. Uh, what this really means is that you can't change it. Like it's it's about downright impossible to hack or manipulate anything that's stored within the blockchain. Uh, and just as building a Lego structure requires collaboration, uh, blockchain thrives on a network of participants or nodes. Nodes are better thought of as supercomputers. So each participant has a copy of the entire chain that promotes transparency. Like just like if you and your friends all had the same instruction manual on building your Lego house, consensus among nodes is needed to add new blocks mirroring the Lego analogy of unified construction. And while our Lego analogy, analogy uh, illustrates the foundation of blockchain, its applications stretch beyond digital assets. So the security and transparency of the blockchain network allows major industries to leverage its foundation uh, to assist with things like supply chain management, medical record keeping, accounting, financial industries, uh, construction, real estate, you name it. And some of the largest corporations in the world, such as IBM, Fidelity, Goldman Sachs, BMW, Walmart, JP Morgan, Microsoft, and many more are using blockchain technology right now, uh, today. So... A couple more slides here on my end, uh, a little bit change of space. I want to talk about IRAs and investment regulations very quickly. Um, and we'll delve into the relationship between digital asset investing and IRAs. Uh, first and foremost, to maintain the exempt status of your IRA, uh, it's important to adhere to investment regulations. Uh, the IRS imposes regulations on IRAs investments just to ensure they're aligned with the purpose of retirement savings. Um, prohibited transactions such as self-dealing or using the IRA for personal gain uh, can lead to penalties. And the prohibited transactions and restricted investments say what you cannot do, but they don't say necessarily what you can do. And digital asset investments are able to be made through your IRA so long as you don't violate any self-dealing rules as it is with any investment. Uh, such as purchasing Bitcoin and then transferring it to your personal account, for example. And if you have any questions on that, you can, of course, contact Interest or myself or anyone to discuss about kosher ways to make those transactions. Um, and then risk management. Before, Lastly, before I pass it on to you, Corey, um, I just want to focus on this for a quick second. Um, understanding and mitigating risks are essential to protect your investments to achieve long-term success. Um, and that's just going to involve identifying potential risks and taking steps to minimize their impact. Um, like if you're researching a company you want to invest in, it's always important to research them, their history, their track record, investor reviews, SEC filings, if they're required to report them. There's also different types of hedging strategies that you can implement as well. Um, one of those hedging strategies is not putting it all into one bit, uh, one cryptocurrency, but having a portfolio 
if one sees a downward trend, maybe another one's going to see an upward trend. Um, leveraging any profits you're earning and investing those in other markets. Um, one of the best or biggest ways that people like to passively invest while lowering the risk is by passively investing into companies that create digital assets such as Bitcoin. Um, that way they receive just a steady income stream from that company via US dollars. That company creates the digital assets. They're the ones that are dealing with the volatility and using their own resources uh, to hedge against that. They deal with it while you're just simply passively investing into that company who's creating those assets. Uh, and Corey will talk a little bit more about uh, how that could potentially work as well. Uh, so thank you, everybody. Um, and I'm going to pass it along now uh, here to Corey. Here's our contact information. Um, so feel free to scan that QR code to see a quick video on NFNA. Great job, Judd. Excellent. There's, there's so much information out there that people are not really truly familiar with regards to blockchain, uh, how people are making money in the blockchain, and how people are making with cryptocurrency. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of speculation in the crypto cryptocurrency market. For one thing, NFNA Group is not in the Bitcoin business. We are considered as institutional miners. Uh, Josh Moore, myself, and Stephen Green started NFNA Group back in 2000, late 2016. We started in a small garage out of Pflugerville, Texas. Josh was the brains behind developing a software and mining. He uh, got Steve and I involved in the company. We were surprised that we could use a supercomputer and mine currency. And we took that philosophy of building our company by adding supercomputers, mining a currency like Bitcoin, and selling that currency off in the open market. So today, uh, we want to share what we have to offer to Entrust. We've been with Entrust for, I think, for over two years now. We have a lot of clients, and hopefully some of the clients are here with us today. And we, uh, we're still going after seven years. So we offer digital asset mining equipment, which, in other words, a supercomputer. We offer a program which eliminates the volatility of buying Bitcoin. Uh, we have clients that will purchase the same supercomputers that we purchase internally. Um, we have a phenomenal six-year track record delivering predictable, consistent cash flow to our clients. So today I'm going to show you a little bit more how we offer a fixed rate return to accredited investors only. So Judd, if you mind yep. moving to the next slide. For one thing, we are in compliance with the SEC. We are uh, considered under a Reg D 506C. That means we have to, anybody who gets involved with us has to have third party accreditation that you are an accredited investor. And I think most of you already know what an accreditation is that you must have a million dollars worth of net worth excluding your home. And one thing FNA is not offering is ownership, shares, interests, warrants, percentages. You buy the same asset we do, which is a supercomputer. And John, if you can change to the next slide, please. You buy the same equipment we buy. We procure the equipment, the supercomputer. You, per you sign a purchase agreement, allowing us to procure the equipment on your behalf. And then you sign a lease agreement, allowing us to lease your supercomputer from you. We take that supercomputer and we place your computer in these sophisticated gold standard data centers located in Kentucky, Georgia, North Carolina, Nebraska, Texas. And these computers are being run 24 seven. Your computer as well as NFNA's computer goes into a pool of roughly about 10 to 12,000 computers. And from the output that we generate Bitcoin, this is where we pay our uh, lessors on a monthly basis. Next slide, please. Again, as I mentioned, you get a, a 
back up one slide, please. You get a lease agreement, you get a purchase agreement, and of course you get a bill of sale. You own the asset. We just lease the asset from you. This will give you an example, the uh, velocity of where we put our, uh, our miners or our, our supercomputers. The picture of me on the upper left, uh, this is a data center located in Kentucky. It's, uh, it's 20 feet high by 90 feet long. These are computers mining Bitcoin 24 seven. Uh, the picture to the right gives you a, a better visual of how large is the scale is in regards to the aisles of computers. And down below, that's my partner, Josh, uh, at one of our repair centers, because if the computers go down, if they're missing a fan or a fan blows out or a board blows out, we're able to pop those machines out of the uh, racks and replace them within three hours and put them back in. So they're starting up again, uh, generating more revenue for us. And then this, uh, the picture on the lower right gives you an idea of one of our other data centers that we have our machines located at. Uh, they're a size of uh, a football field and a half, and they have, I don't know, probably about 10,000 machines at that location. Next slide, please. So today what we're doing is we're offering Entrust clients uh, a phenomenal opportunity with a, 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 a purchase with lease back program. We have a one year at 9%, we have a two year at 12, we have a three year at 15%, we have a four year at 18% and a five year at 21% annualized paid monthly. Um, we, just, we just completed our 74th monthly payment to our clients, either through IRAs, self of course, self-directed IRAs and or a check. A lot, most of our clients use their IRAs, especially if they're not performing as well as they would like it to be. And we have a phenomenal track record of making predictable, consistent monthly payments. And this is a this is our five year lease program. Next slide. So for more information, you can contact us at 877-422-4994. There's a wealth of more information. We don't have a lot of time here. We would love to share more with you. We have a, a ton of videos we could share with you. We have company brochures. We have press releases about NF8. We've been interviewed on media nationally. Um, we have white papers and company philosophies. And if you go to our website, uh, there's uh, bios on myself and Josh Moore and everybody that works with the company. Uh, we also are listed with Trustpilot. Uh, clients have been with us for years and years and years, love us. And they've gone to this third party uh, validation company called Trustpilot, where they're able to voice their opinions uh, about NF8 and other companies out there. But uh, if you want to get a, a real good feel of what kind of company we are and how we stick to our word and we deliver what we promise, feel free to go over to trustpilot.com and you'll and type in NFNA group and you'll get a wealth of information. And of course, please visit us on our website. Again, there's a, a wealth of information of who we are, what we are and how we actually got started in a, in a garage. But um, that is it for uh, my end. I would love to open it up for any questions and uh, Q and A's that, that you may have. Feel free to ask any question. Doug, you may want to join us. Yep. Next slide, uh, John, please. Great. Okay. Um, before we get to the questions, well, thank you so much, uh, John and Corey. This was very informative and educational. Um, a lot of good information there. So, what's next? I mean, our Let's talk about our next webinar, Demystifying Mineral Investing for IRA Holders. Uh, please register today if you have not yet and join us on uh, November 15th. We'd love to hear from you in terms of the survey. If you have any feedback or topic requests, please do so before you leave. If you need more information on self-directed IRAs, please visit our website and the Learning Center or follow us on the social media for any updates.
Okay. Um, can we please put uh, go go to the next slide, um, Judd, with our contact information as we answer any questions out there. So these are the contact informations for uh, for myself, for Corey, um, and uh, maybe Judd could also um, you know say his as well. If you have any uh, questions relating to um, self-directed IRAs or interest, please reach out to me. Any questions about NF? Uh, and eight, um, please reach out to Judd and Corey. Um, so in terms of our questions, let's look and see what we have. So first question comes from Robert. Um, I, I guess that's for you guys. Um, when will Bitcoin mining end? Judd, you want to take that? Yeah, good question. Um, so when I talked said earlier, there's a predetermined supply limit of Bitcoin, and that number is 21 million. Uh, there is about 19 million Bitcoin that are in circulation today. And the way they come into circulation is through mining. So there's 2 million more Bitcoin that will be mined. Um, the way that mining works is every four years, there's a halving that occurs, meaning the reward that a miner gets for Bitcoin, that reward gets cut in half. So right now, when you mine a block on the blockchain, you get 6.25 Bitcoin. Um, going into next year, that gets cut in half to 3.1. Four years later, it's going to be one point, whatever that number is, and it's going to be half of one, then a quarter of one, and so on. So Bitcoin, the very last one, it'll be down to like small decimals, will be the year 2140. Um, so there, we got a lot longer to go when it comes to being able to mine Bitcoin. Uh, and I also assume that in the future, uh, there may be other cryptocurrencies that are worth mining as well uh, that catch on. But for us, we got a, a while to go uh, to continue mining. Great. Thank you, Judd. Um, I think I have another question here. Is there a way to refer clients for a commission if they choose to move forward uh, with you? Um, these are clients that would like to access to digital assets. Uh, great question. Uh, as long as you are a licensed certified, uh, yes, under the SEC laws and rules, uh, obviously brokers and IRAs who are licensed uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, that's a discussion offline as well. But as long as you are a licensed representative, yes. Great. Thank you, Corey. Another question here. Um, can you discuss XRP and potential investment opportunities? Um, we, in our business, we don't, we don't like XRP could be in our portfolio. You know, we have our own hedging strategies. Um, but it's not something that I believe we mine. Uh, if we do, it's it would be an extremely small portion of our portfolio. If we do it all, I don't think we do. Uh, when it comes to XRP, it's, we don't have any type of program or offering around that uh, as of now. So that's not something that we can really speak uh, on behalf of. We, we focus mostly on 99% of our mining efforts are Bitcoin. And that's what all the institutions are mining. I mean, look at BlackRock. It's a great example. They mine strictly Bitcoin and they mine roughly about 50 to 70 Bitcoins a day. Uh, and then you have all the other institutions as well. So that's all the institutional miners like NF and A group uh, mostly spend all their time mining Bitcoin. Got it, okay. Um, another question, how much uh, do the super machines cost? Our, our purchase and lease back program minimum starts at 30,000 per supercomputer. What's really great about our program, I'll, I'll give you a great example. If you decide to buy a supercomputer from us, we procure the equipment, we assemble it, we add our proprietary software, we place your machine alongside with ours, it is state-of-the-art gold standard data centers. At the end of the term of the lease, if you do a one year through a five year, we buy back the computer from you for the original price. So you're getting a straight ROI across the lease agreement that you decide to select. So in other words, it's a $30,000 investment. 
at 21% uh, annualized paid monthly, you're receiving an ACH payment of $525 a month for the next 60 months. And at the end of the term of the lease, we buy back the computer at $30,000. Got it. Any other questions out there? Um, I don't see any other open questions. Judd or Corey, any other comments or maybe any questions that you kind of um, had in the past that might be of interest to any of our listeners out there that you yeah, might address? I would like to say is, again, we're you're not investing into anything. Any. You buy the asset, you own the asset, we lease that asset from you and pay you on a monthly basis. And again, at the end of the term of the lease, we buy back the asset uh, from you. So um, that's been our model. That's been our, that's what we've been doing for the past 74 months of making predictable, consistent payments to our clients. Judd, you want to add anything to it? No, no, I think that's, uh, I think that sums up most of it. Of course, if anyone has more questions, uh, like Corey said, our website has a, a plethora of what you can review. There's video content, there's brochures you can look at, uh, and you can ask us anything. We're not shy, so feel free to call us, email us, and uh, we want to be as transparent as possible. Well, actually, I have a, just a kind of a generic question. I, I think some of our listeners would be interested in this. What is your minimum investment, if you don't mind? The minimum participation is 30000 Okay. Great. Great. Um, okay. Well, I guess I had just one more question here just pop up. From my understanding of these types of machines, they die after a period of time. How are you able to return the cost of the equipment at the end of the lease? Judd, you want to answer that? Uh, you can take that one. Okay. So these machines average between three and a half to four and a half years. What we've been doing lately is testing uh, machines right now, which is called immersion mining, where we're able to take the boards out of the computers, put them in a plexiglass in some cases and submerge these boards to get another year, year and a half life out of them. Um, that's the next trend of institutional mining, which is called immersion mining. So at the end of the term as well, by the amount of money that we're able to make on your particular machine and other machines and the machines that we put our, our machines into the uh, pool of thousands and thousands of machines, we reserve, to, we reserve a year in advance before, your, before the end of the lease agreement to purchase your machines back from you from our revenue and from you, for the revenue from your machine. That's how we're able to do that. Yeah. Or, we call it or, a, or through immersion mining. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, I'll say, so we call it an infinite miner, right? So, you know, obviously the miners that we're using now are completely different from the ones we started off with in 2017. I don't think any of those uh, we, we have running at this point, not because they are broken down, just because there has been advancements in technology and how powerful uh, these computers are, how much energy they use, how well are they at cooling themselves. These are all factors that have to be taken into, uh, into consideration. Uh, but with one of our clients, if, uh, if that machine is ready to become decommissioned, we're always investing in looking for the latest, greatest technology there is out there. Um, so in that situation, it would not affect your lease payment. Uh, those payments are coming from the pool of machines, not your specific one. And we would also get you a new machine and provide you with new serial numbers. There'd be no repurchase or anything like that necessary. Uh, so you would always have the latest and greatest machine uh, through the end of your lease term. I also want to add to that. There's no cash calls. We'll never ask you for another dime regards to your machine or your computer uh, whatsoever. Yep. And we do have a video from last year of our company, NFN8, was the first worldwide to receive the latest and greatest upgrade in the next generation of machine. We would be happy to share that moment with you. It's a it's about a two and a half minute video uh, of the newest, latest, and greatest machine. So we're we're constantly updating and uh, advancing our machines all the time. 
Great. Uh, another question. Uh, what if what if you can't get miners to lease the equipment? Well, we do. Well, first of all, NFN8 has an allocation of machines coming in on a monthly basis. And if, after our allocation, if we have extra machines, we offer those machines to new uh, investors, or we call them purchasers, or we have we have a lot of clients that are always requesting for additional machines. So based on our allocation monthly, if we may have 15 machines left for the month or 20 machines left, we'll go out and offer that to our existing clients or new clients as well. So the machines are coming in on a monthly basis. We don't have them, pardon me, let me elaborate a little bit more. We don't have them in a warehouse waiting for individuals to buy the machines because if these machines are not plugged in, we're not making money. So it's in our best interest to have these machines plugged in as soon as possible. Hopefully that hopefully that answers your question. Great. Um, Ambrose has a question. How can real estate inventor take part in this investment? Do you want to answer that? Uh, what was the question one more time? How can real estate inventor take part in these investments? How can a real estate investor take part in these investments? Um, I mean, the, the same way anyone would. We, we get a lot of people that in real estate that love NFN8 because typically people in real estate love cash flow. Uh, and this is exactly what this is. This is a cash flow deal. Uh, as soon as you sign the purchase and lease agreement, uh, we have those direct deposits coming to you within 60 days every single month for whatever the term of the lease was for. Um, so, I mean, it's a, the same as if, as if you're receiving a rental check every single month. Um, so we, we it's popular among real estate investors, uh, but as long as you're accredited, uh, whether you're in real estate or not, uh, you can do the deal. And the accreditation is $1 million net worth outside of personal residence or and or $200,000 a year income if you file single or $300,000 per year uh, household income if you're filing jointly. Great. I think we have a couple more questions and we have time for those. Eric is asking, are the returns in any way tied to the coin value? Not at all. Because from the pool of computers we have in our data centers, NFNA gets all the output. So we're mining consistently every day and we're mining Bitcoin every day. So when our, it's always been our philosophy is that we don't hold Bitcoin, we cash out in US dollars every 24 to 48 hours. And that's how we pay our purchasers on a monthly basis. So think about it, if you're, if you're mining Bitcoin every day, every day and you're selling at the height of the market every 24 to 48 hours, you know, in a 30 day span, that's a lot of money, a lot of money. So that's how we pay our clients. We don't pay our clients from new sales. It doesn't come from sales at all. It comes from the mining efforts uh, from mining Bitcoin on a daily basis. That's why we've been able to make, I think this month, Jay, correct me if I'm wrong, is 74 or our 75th uh, payment to our clients. It's a long time. I'm losing track. It's 74, 75th. And yeah, I mean, we, we were making payments when Bitcoin was at 5,000 um, higher, higher returns back then, actually, because, you know, we, we had to, you know, get out the door and nobody knew what the heck it was. Uh, and then we were also making payments a couple of years ago and Bitcoin was at 70,000 and we're still making those payments today. Uh, we're at six to 26,000. See, when you're mining, um, Bitcoin way, 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 way below spot price and selling at the height of the market, you can see the spread. It's a, it's a nice large spread. So to when you're manufacturing currency, it's, it's, it's completely different from being in the manufacturing business. Yeah. So, and I, I don't want to bore everyone on this presentation, Eric, if you want to connect with me offline there, there's a lot of equation that goes into what makes a mining operation successful. Uh, from your electricity rate, the type of machine you have, how many machines do you have, what 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 is it being pulled to, uh, where is the data center, how well are the machines maintained and kept, 
Uh, there's a lot that goes into that. So if you have some questions and want to geek out with me, I'd be more than happy to have a phone call with you on it. So I think I have one final question here on in the chat. Is there any year one depreciation on the equipment purchased? Yes and no. Um, you need to ask your CPA. We're not CPAs whatsoever. But I will say this much. At the end of the term of the lease, you're going to get a recapture. So you may want to ask your CPA or financial advisor because we're going to buy that machine back from you at the end of the term of the lease. So if you are taking depreciation, again, you're going to get a recapture. And also, you're not getting a K-1 from us. You're getting a 1099. This is strictly, pardon me? 1099R, yeah. Yeah, 99. This is strictly cash flow. If you're looking for predictable, consistent cash flow on a monthly basis, that's all that's what we offer. There's no tax benefits, depreciation. Like I said, you need to talk, speak to your financial advisor or CPA because you will get a recapture at the end of the term. And if I may say something here, I mean, based on the strategy, that is something that uh, could, again, you can think about it. For all the self-directed IRA investors out there, cash flow is something that you might want to think about when it comes to your IRAs. Um, you know, if you have a traditional, even better if you have a Roth IRA. So, all right, that's, um, I think that's all it is in terms of the questions. I really want to thank Judd and Corey for their time uh, this morning. This has been very informative, um, a lot of education. I'm sure people will have, uh, our listeners will have more questions. Again, please feel, feel free to reach out uh, offline to both uh, Corey and Judd about blockchain and, and NF, uh, N8 and any questions that you have about self-directed IRA, myself here. I want to thank, thank our listeners out there for their time. Uh, we appreciate it, and we hope to see you on our next webinar on November 15th. Thank you again, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you. Appreciate you your time. Thank you.